Hey guys, we're going to talk about the forehand in a different light, and I'm going to use some analogies. Uh, I do this a lot in the classroom as a teacher about how to connect with kids uh, with things that I'm trying to teach them with things they already know. And I remember a long time ago um, a movie called Road Trip, and there's a there's a scene in the movie uh, that the guy they do this this pretty fun adventure, and they're coming back. And these college students, one of them says, I have to study, I have a philosophy exam, and next, the next day, there's no way I can pass this. And a guy, um, and one of his friends is like, well, I can teach you philosophy in a day, I just need to know what you're interested in. And the guy would say, well, I, I really like um, WWF. So he went on to describe philosophy in the analogies of WWF. So I thought that was pretty cool, and you know, a teacher in me, I thought that was pretty neat. Um, but I want to do this um, as a forehand too. So I'm going to give you a few analogies that might help you um, instead of thinking about all these things, if you just think this one analogy or, or put them all together if you'd like, it might help your forehand, okay? So the first common mistake is over rotation of the forehand. So we take our racket too far back. So you don't see that in this angle, but if I'm going here, you don't notice this, but if I'm swinging at to you, I like to pretend that there's a white line here and I can't take my racket behind that because my racket will become a C swing. This way though, it's gonna be a circular swing. So most of my energy is gonna go around me and then I'm trying to go forward and then around. That's not a very efficient swing. You don't get a lot of power that way. So you wanna be linear. So you want your racket behind you maybe, but not over here. So what I tell my players is no tail. This is their tail. I don't wanna see their tail behind. Notice that I, uh, it looks like I have a tail right here. So I tell my students, no tail, all right? So you wanna hide the tail. So the racket should be a little bit behind you. If you're strong, you don't really need a back, so you can be right in here. You know, but regardless, the idea of this is 12 o'clock, you can be right around six o'clock. You don't wanna be any further back, you know, five, four, or three o'clock. This is where you get that C swing there. So no tail is what I tell my students, okay? And another thing to help them with that is I always think like after they do the load and their, their racket head is up, I go, okay, now you gotta go down and you're gonna pat the, the dog. And I mentioned this before, but I'm adding a few more. So you're gonna pat the dog on the, the pat, uh, pat him on the, on the butt, he's facing you. You can imagine a dog facing you. You're patting him on the butt and then you're gonna slide the racket along his back and then up over his head to take a swing, okay? But the idea is, I mean, regardless is you gotta get your racket to be padding here, okay? And then I always look for the butt of the racket to be facing forward throughout that swing. All right, so no tail, no tail, and pat the dog. Next thing is, I saw a couple pros uh, mention this one that I thought was good, is um, skipping the rock. So they go through the ball like you're gonna skip a rock. So I just kinda, I'm, a, I'm more of a science guy, so I envision it as, you know, if you have a y-axis and an x-axis on a graph, and this is the plane, you could call it a, even a plane, x-plane, and all I'm trying to do is keep the racket on that plane for as long as I can. So that's the same thing as skipping a rock. If you're skipping a rock, you're gonna go all the way through. If you're gonna throw a frisbee on the forehand side, it's the same thing, it's a forehand frisbee throw as well. So the idea is you're gonna pat the dog, you're gonna go all the way out like that, like you're throwing a frisbee, skipping a rock, going along the same plane. But the idea is, whatever that works for you, it doesn't matter. And my last analogy would be big nose. So I had another student of mine who, who was taught by a couple other pros that mentioned um, he likes to have them do big nose. So that allows you to really make sure the follow through is all the way out and your shoulder is being used, okay? And then also make sure that you gotta clear the shoulder. So as you can see, there's a lot of things that happen naturally when you do these. Like if I say big nose, it makes you follow through, it makes you clear your shoulder, and it really emphasizes a good follow through. So that might help um, alleviate all these little things where your mind is racing about you know all the stuff you're trying to hit. So again, facing you. No tail, pat the dog, forehand frisbee throw, skip the rock, whatever you want to call it, and then big nose. And that allows you to really come through the ball and have a solid um, stroke that is not, uh, that you're not arming it or anything. In my previous video, I talk about using your legs. So that's another thing that I always want a player to finish. But 
that's just something on the side. I'm just focusing on the upper body with these analogies, okay? But going through, you always want to finish with your hip going, uh, your, your back hip to be swinging forward towards your target, okay? So try any of those analogies. I would just say to pick one and make that your silver lining. So if I do, okay, big nose, you know, and you don't care about anything else you're doing, and you do this, and the ball goes along, you're still doing this, you know, that's, that's okay. At least you're trying something new and you're trying something that's a little unorthodox for you, but it still works. You know, maybe you're looking at pat the dog. So the ball is coming, you're patting the dog, and you're going through, and you hit the ball in the net or something. At least you have this down, right? And then you're looking at the no tail. Just tell your partner who you're hit with, hey, can you see my racket behind me? You know, the whole idea is maybe just put it here, hang on to it with your hand, and just drop it. Now just go forward. And that allows you to hit a ball straight and not have that circular swing I was talking about. But regardless, just try them out. Hopefully it helps. It's just the teacher and me to give you guys some help. So good luck.